All right, we are on the play. Rug Delver. That hand looks pretty good, so uh, we're going to keep it. We're going to start off with a Narnum Renegade, which is probably going to look extremely funky from our opponent's side. But, what are you going to do? We're going to Renegade on turn 1 with Revolt, which is half the reason to be slamming it on turn 1 when I fetch. But, also, we just don't have a better turn 1 play, so we're going to be slamming it. Holding up Disrupting Shoal in case pitching Stubborn Denial or even Mana Leak if they have some sort of Mana Accelerant seems like a good idea. And then turn 2, hopefully we do more Disruption into a Mandrills soon enough, which will hopefully get us there. Stomping Ground, of course, if I could successfully click it. So they're probably going to think we're on some sort of uh, low-cost zoo variant. Revolt Zoo, I think, is what it was called for a little while. I don't know if that's much of a deck anymore. We're going to get in for two and hold up all the disruption. Because there is literally nothing I could do besides just tapping lands. Float some mana, let it drain from the pool. So, we're just going to see what the best counterspell is for the situation. The opponent's on a blue-red deck that plays Serum Visions. So, pretty much every blue-red deck. Three copies, not bad. Well, they probably have a very good hand right now. Um, do I want to slam Goyf? I do have Shoal up. Goyf is bolt resistant. Yeah, I want to slam Goyf. Having disrupting Shoal in hand makes playing Goyf pretty easy there. I don't feel bad about it is what I mean by it's easy. This could be a Grixis deck. Ooh, Storm again? Fantastic. Um, I'm going to counter that. Yes, pay alternative costs. That, pitch that. I'm a little sad to see my Mana Leak go away, but we're putting an instant and a creature in the graveyard. Goyf is a 4-5. Denial is on. I will not be playing that Delver of Secrets. I don't care if my clock becomes a turn slower by not playing it. I am more interested in having blue mana for my counter spells. Two turns to go. It's also notable that Delver only speeds up our clock if it transforms. And they would have had to fetch there. This looks a lot like a gift. I am ecstatic to be able to shock here because that means I can counter gifts and have spell snare up. Knock them down to three and see what's up. They'll probably go down to two, there it is. Let's see if two counter spells can get us through this. They didn't end step gifts, so we are probably in a good spot. I'm going to counter the Pyretic Ritual because if we let it happen, they have access to five mana and Spell Snare may never do anything good. Although it probably still will, I just don't want them to start gaining mana. But the big thing is, if we Spell Snare this, they have two mana left, and with Denial in hand, we basically can't lose. So, yeah, that, that that's just about it. Second Pyretic, I'm going to counter that too, because if you let them start chaining mana and go for the payoff spell, if they have a second payoff spell of sorts, once you let them get a bunch of mana, it's still going to be game over. But if you counter the enablers, the payoff will never matter. Against Gift Storm again, twice in a row, that's fantastic. I do enjoy the Gift Storm matchup. Despite the amount of salt that it tends to bring, I doubt that's inherent to Gift Storm and is probably just a deal that a few players have. 
we are going to board just like I did in the previous match, although depending on the order I upload these or in that you guys watch them, this could be the first Skiff Storm match and the other one could be second. But anyways, two tar fire, two tar fire, two pyroclasm and a mountain coming in. Mountain helps us hit our land drops against the combo deck to make sure we don't fall in behind and that we can clock and disrupt while Pyroclasm is very good against Empty the Warrens and at the very worst can deal with Electromancer, although I shouldn't say that's the worst case scenario because the real worst case scenario is we have two Pyroclasm rotting in our hands while they hit land drops and eventually just kill us without playing any mana reducers, or they just slam a Brawl and Pyroclasm does nothing. Unless we go like Pyroclasm Forked Bolt, for that super value play. Yeah. Uh, I like to board out Traverse Snapcaster Mage, one Snapcaster Mage to be specific, and Narnum Renegade. Renegade is not a very fast clock, although it certainly was good in this game. It also doesn't do much besides be a one mana creature with two power, and I don't think I need that. The Death Touch part is almost certainly irrelevant because a Storm player attacking into a Renegade with one of their cost reducers is probably insane or just has the most awesome set of circumstances to make that a good play. I like to cut one Traverse because we don't want to get to the late game. Nobody wants to get to the late game here, so I don't want my late game hedges. I keep the one Traverse because it still helps with hitting land drops which is helpful, and cutting one Snapcaster Mage feels fine to me because it is slow. It doesn't really hurt our ability to clock them because Snapcaster Mage isn't a great clock, even worse so than Renegade, and it's mostly more of a late game card, so I don't want too many of them. I think cutting the one is fine. It's notable that all three of these cards are at least okay against Storm, but I think they're slightly less okay than the worst of these cards, which makes this my 60 going into post-board games. Let's get back in there. This hand is a keep, and I very much like it. Yep. We're going to go for a turn one Serum Visions, hopefully finding a clock, and then we will hold up Lightning Bolt and Tarfire on turn two for whatever cost reducers they play. We found a Thought Scour so far. That could be okay. It's notable that this hand isn't great about a, isn't great at playing around Blood Moon. I don't want either of these cards. Um, do I want either of these cards? I don't think so. I'd rather hit lands. Let's go to the opponent. Goyf was a good draw. I might slam Goyf. We're probably going to bolt this though, so we're not slamming Goyf. Visions makes me a little sad. Like I was saying, we can't play around Blood Moon very much with this hand, so we're just not going to. We do need to kill that Brawl. That is pretty much non-negotiable, which is very unfortunate because if they have a second Brawl or a Nauseous Revival, we're going to be in trouble. Electromancer is slightly better for us, not for them, because we can tar fire it. We can either tar fire the Electromancer or we play Goyf now. If we tar fire the Electromancer, we're not actually getting anywhere, and we also have Disrupting Shoal for whatever card I want to cut them off of, assuming that they won't be able to go off without that, because on two lands, if they cast a Manamorphose and I counter it, because I assure you, if they cast a Manamorphose, I will be countering it. If that happens, they still have one mana and they could continue going off. But, if we just kill this Electromancer, we're not actually getting anywhere, and I don't know when the next land drop is coming, because I'm not casting the Serum Visions or this Thought Scour, so I don't know when I'll be able to clock plus Disrupt, besides having Disrupting Shoal in my hand. So I think Goyf is going to be the better play, although I really don't want them to have an active Electromancer. They missed their third land drop, which is nice. That makes it less likely that they'll be going off on us here. But 
I don't know, it, it, it's a kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario. We're in between a rock and a hard place. There's the third land drop, which puts us in a very bad spot. Do I let that resolve? If I let Baral resolve, they're probably not doing anything this turn. Especially because if they go for a 2-mana spell or a 1-mana spell, I can shoal it. But if I don't deal with Baral, next turn we're in big trouble. So I do think I just want to shoal it. Even though they could totally go off here if they have a Mana Morphos or a bunch of Rituals into a Mana Morphos. They could even remand my shoal if they want. Which they might actually be doing right now. Of course... That isn't a huge consideration because I need to be dealing with these things, so I can't say they might stop me from dealing with it as a way of excusing not dealing with it. That seems like some backwards logic. Um, we know for a fact that they have at least one cost reducer, so I almost want to ignore the second. We can't deal with both. So maybe we just forget about it. Most of their spells have one generic mana at most. Gifts is going to be very efficient here, but I think I'd rather have Shoal and Denial than Tarfire the Electromancer and lose the Denial. So I think we're going to do it like this, which could be the wrong play. I don't know. We're just in an awful spot right now. That is an excellent attack. It's probably not relevant, but it is still an excellent attack, and I am super happy that they made it. Okay, we can Spell Snare this and then Shoal something else. Or we Denial this Shoal something else, or we just let it resolve. Letting this resolve feels bad, but the amount of mana they have isn't super relevant. Of course... I think what I have to do here is just hope that they don't have enough cards in hand to go off, and if they try to draw cards to cut them off there. Here's a Mana Morphos, I'm definitely going at that. So do I Snare it or do I Denial it? I think I Snare it because Denial is more versatile. So if we do end up untapping, we can go for Denial after. Awesome. Awesome. 100% fantastic. Mandrills is not what I wanted to see here. We're going to attack. We are winning the race if they don't go off, so that's good. And I'm going to keep hoping that I can cut them off at the cards, because we can't bottleneck their mana at this point, so we're not going to try. They have two cost reducers and at least four lands. They might be playing a fifth right now, so I can't touch their mana. That's off the table. But if we hope that they don't have cards and we can attack them at the cards side of Storm, because Storm is all about mana plus cards equals high Storm count kill you. So you either want to cut off their mana or you cut off their cards. If you can do both, cool, but it's not super necessary. You're probably just showing off. We can't touch their mana at this point, so we're going for the cards. Now, they could have an end step Gifts Ungiven, so if we tap this Steam Vents, we won't be able to Denial that and we're probably in trouble. But if we cast this tar fire, we can hit them, they go to 7, Goyf is lethal in 2 turns, Goyf is lethal in 2 turns anyways. We hit the Electromancer, we attack, and then they have just Brawl. I don't think it's worth it. We cannot draw our land. It is relevant that the tar fire takes a turn off of our clock, so maybe I should have made that play. It's possible I was being too cautious. However, it's a little late to make the tar fire play at this point, so... Now I'm going to suck it up and live with the decision that I made. Whether or not it was the good decision, or the best decision to make. Do I go for it here? They played a Spire Bluff Canal. They have three cards at most. If they have a Gifts Ungiven right now, and I end up tar-firing the Electromancer, how good is that? Probably okay. I honestly think it's probably okay. 
If they have a remand here, I might actually show my Tarfire. It's a dispel, that's fine. They keep their dude. Do I want to shoal the dispel? It's unlikely that we find a mana leak, snapcaster mage, or simic charm. Um, did I already pitch the snap? Yes, I did. So it's unlikely we find one of the three or another shoal that could pitch to shoal because one mana spells aren't great for them right now. Do I care about goblin electromancer? That's the question. I kind of do, but I also don't. I don't want them to be able to chump block. That's what this comes down to. Also, putting an extra card in the graveyard means we can play Mandrills next turn, which could be relevant. It's not very likely, but it could be. Shoal is unlikely to get much better. So I don't hate making that play. Really, I just want Tarfire to be in the graveyard. I could play Mandrills, but I probably won't. I'm definitely attacking first. Thank you! Why did I have to wait that long game? Deck, thank you. I appreciate it. We really didn't look at that many cards, so I don't have any merit to complaining about not hitting land drops. But, come on. All I ever wanted was a second blue source. And we found it. Blocking with Baral is pretty good here, I think, because, like I was saying earlier, they don't need mana, really. I am almost certainly going to go with Serum Visions, hold up Denial, because I just want to put something good on top of the deck. Delirium is online, I think. Delirium is not online, but if I crack this fetch, Delirium goes online, what can we tutor out? Not a Snapcaster Mage, which makes Traverse not great. Go to end step. If we did have a Snapcaster Mage in the deck, Traverse gets a bit better. Do I allow this Metamorphose? Jeez. Oh, the decision making. I think I just counter it. Because, like I said earlier, I want to cut them off at the cards. So, I'm going to keep doing that. They scooped. There it is. Wow. 2 0. Oh. That is fantastic. That makes me quite happy. That was a good game. Lots of decision making going on. That's one of the things I very much like about Rug Delver. You're interactive regardlessly of whether or not the opponent is interactive. So even against linear decks like Storm, which do interact with you a little bit sometimes which makes the matchup all the more fun. But even against non-interactive decks, we still make the game interactive because we play an interactive deck inherently. So it's still fun, good, clean magic. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I will see you, you guessed it, in the next one.